Hi guys, welcome back to Max Electronics. In today's video, we will be redoing this sign. Actually, I've already started. I didn't actually realize that I should probably do video what I'm doing. And then I've pulled it apart and I thought, okay, I'm going to do the video. So we're going to be changing this exit sign, which is a typical that you see. It's um, Thomas and Betts brand. We're going to be redoing this and making it into on-air sign wireless that works with Atom switches. So I've pulled it apart and I cleaned it because it was in a rough condition. So I've got all the guts out and I have them here, which I will show you. Uh, that's the guts of it. So we've got the main control circuit board. We've got the actual LED strip. That can still be reused, probably battery. Battery is definitely dead. You can tell that it's dead. Um, nickel cadmium battery, 4.8 volts, 1.8 amps. Main LED strip, then we've got charging LED, the test button, circuit board, and that's it. Jesus, everything's falling apart. And that's it. So I'm going to put this apart because that video is not about this. Uh, and let's have a look at, Jesus, this. So those inserts, very easily removable. You can just push them out and that's your insert. And you can put anything else. Sometimes they put uh, blank on one side or, you know, black on one side and this on the other or some other signate. So again, we don't need that. We are interested in enclosure. Inside, I uh, will show you those pull apart and those just side panels. So here I'm going to plot out of black vinyl assigned on air. So black or with white letters seeing through. And obviously you'll be able to see the when the light's on. Inside the sign, uh, well, that's the bottom part. That's the base. So it's got a socket. Again, it's all pulled apart and I didn't want to clip it back in. But that's the socket uh, that supplies the power to it. We're not going to be using it, so it's going to be there just for um, um, structural purpose because that holds part of it together. But that usually slides into here and slides in clips and that sign all held together. That's metal, the rest is plastic. There's nothing inside that box, that's just a junction box. So when the cable comes in and connects through here for the mains, that just covers it up. So we're not going to be using that junction box either, I don't think. No, we won't be, because I need to put a switch in here. So it's another spare part. I will be using that because that's structural. The back of it, and let's unclip the other side. They'll be very easily removable, so we've got the frame here. My plan is to put uh, RGB LEDs. Well, I'm going to break off those batteries. That's where the battery is held. It's inside the actual light fixture. I'm going to break those off. That's what used to hold the original... Um, circuit board with lights in it and I'm going to put four LED strips in there. Uh, I'm going to be using only, it's RGB, but I'm only going to be using red color because this is going to be on air sign. I'm going to stick them down there. I'll break all those off. I'll break those off. Uh, what else? And inside here I am going to be, let's have a look at the components now. Not many components. So we've got the red button, which is in original one, it's normally closed button. So when you push it, it breaks the circuit to test the light. This is normally open button. And when you press it, it resets or it closes. So that's going to be used as a reset in a place of original button. They're wildly available from your local a store, electronics store. I'm going to be using that LM2596 voltage converter because it's going to be 12 volts and then it's going to be stepping down to 5 volts for the um, Wemos D1 module. And here we've got just a few more components uh, that are very simple and there's no custom made circuit boards, nothing like that. Let me just adjust the light. There we go. Uh, so we've got the Wemos D1, which I've already programmed, but you know, just plug it in and put the firmware that is down below onto it. We've got the LED, which is going to be in place of the original LED, and that's going to be just an indicator LED of the state of that tally, whether it's connected to Wi-Fi or not. Uh, a little KC, whatever it is, 06 switch to turn it on, a barrel plug, uh, two resistors, well, three resistors for the LED, for red, green, and blue, and one resistor for those two, two and two, 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 two transistors. The transistors are going to be uh, in parallel for more current because they each one I've measured. So 
each one of those will draw just on red color 134 milliamps i think it was at 13 volts so times four they just exceeding a bit um of the um, current of that transistor by itself so we're going to use two in parallel to increase the current so i'm going to um go and start preparing everything those wires are not going to be used we'll probably chop them off so i'm going to cut those off and i'll stick the led strips and solder the wires to them and then we'll move on to the next part of assembling all this i have installed the led strips inside the sign as you can see and i shorted them just around those parts here so i've done a few jumpers uh, and just two wires, well at the moment just one wire going down and I've also added two more at the top just to make sure that it's equally lit. So uh, also I've decided to keep the connector and it's got three pins so I'm going to have the um, Wemos D1 at the top part built in and the bottom part that is usually it slides onto is going to have the voltage regulator with it. So supply is going to be three pins, um, the green one is going to be three, uh, five volts for the Wemos D1, the blue one's going to be common and ground, and the uh, round one is going to be positive for 12 volts for the LED strips. So very simple this way, if I make more science, I can make it as a tally or something, I can just take it off the base and put a new one in with universal power supply. Uh, so now that I've assembled this, uh, I'm going to uh, add the wire. So I've already also done this one which is just a button and rgb led with the resistors inside there and they just commenting onto this ribbon cable um, and also the transistors so i've also got the schematic included down the bottom so i'm going to solder this yellow wire to the um, ground or red line of the led strips and the black one's going to be ground and the green one's going to be uh, pin on the um, Wemos D1. I'm going to assemble all this, that's very simple now, it's just mechanical putting it all in and closing it together. I'm going to assemble that and then we'll get to the bottom part. So I'll show you before I snap that on, I'll show you what I've soldered here. So be right back. I have assembled it, so here is our LED with the buttons and there is the Wemos D1 and all the wiring going to those three pins. So I'm going to snap now, I'm pretty sure that that's it for the bottom part, so I'm going to snap this on now to seal it off. I've used the double sided tape to put that on, so you can still use a USB port if you want to reprogram it. So that is it here and two more screws go in those points oh. I think that needs to be yeah that's it so that's most of it done so LEDs there solidly and the button you wouldn't be able to push it properly so you'll need something which is good because it is a reset button so you don't want to accidentally bump it you have to press it all the way down so the LED strips are there, here, nothing's rattling, that is good. So I'm going to put the screws in and then we'll get on to the base. I have uh, added the power supply, which is that little LM module. I've added also a um, little barrel plug here, so it fitted very well into this uh, little hole that was already existing there. So now we're just going to add this cover. I decided to use it, thought why not? get it aligned there we go so let's put the top of it onto it and uh, turn it on so it should I haven't got any switcher handy at the moment but um, it will sh go automatically because the red still there when it's not connected to anything it should be hooked up okay so here it is now let's plug it in I'm gonna turn the light off and uh, plug it in. So here we go. All right, so the status LED is blue, it's trying to connect, and it's gonna go red because there is nothing to connect to. Or white, and uh, it should be red by now. I think it's not connected properly yet. There we go. 
Okay, I got it in finally properly, so it's now... Yep, let's see what happens. It is actually quite bright, not right now, right now it's dim because of the booting thing. There we go, so now it's actually quite bright. It doesn't appear like that on the camera, but it is uh, very bright. So now, next step, let's print out the sticker to go over the top. The plotter is now printing away nicely with all the funny noises and it's almost ready to go. I have uh, totally forgotten after I finished the video to tell you how to set up so it shows you a uh, live on air um, sign because this is firmware for the Tallylight. So if you click that link above, that's where you can uh, see the video how to set up actual tally lights that I've done earlier. And then once you go into the access point on your phone, set the first LED as a um, normal and the second LED as a uh, on air, or, or I think it is live or on air, something like that. And that's all you need to do and then uh, you'll get the desired um, effect. I've already picked all the letters off there, as you can see, so let's go to the bench. Here we are with the transfer paper applied. Uh, to be honest, I've never done this before. I just got that plotter. <laughs> so, anyway, I've got the sign ready here somewhere. There it is. I've uh, already cleaned it from all the fingerprints, so I believe... Um, didn't research it or anything, so I believe we need to spray some Windex probably onto it before we can transfer that over. That should be exciting and possibly a disaster, so let's do that. So I've applied a generous amount of Windex onto it. Now let's get it off the vinyl. I've got it off. So, let's give this a go and see if we will fail. See, I've printed it slightly bigger so I can insert it down into there. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Let's try starting from the top. Okay. All right, I'm gonna spend some time getting the bubbles out of here and then we'll uh, have a look what happened, if it worked out or not. I've applied it and I squished, I had to cut a bit of here as you can see in here it looks a lot worse on camera uh, than it is in real life in real life it's barely noticeable and on camera in real life it looks probably like this uh, on camera as you can see the lights are reflecting so I'm gonna do the other side and uh, then um, we'll see if I'll have any luck I'll do it off camera and then we'll see if there's any better luck that I have for the other side I've uh, done the other side and it looks heaps better. It looks perfect uh, off camera, but as you can see, there's still, well, that's a dimple that is in plastic, so that's forgiven. Uh, there's a little bit here, but again, it's only visible on the camera. In real life, it's not visible at all. So let's turn the lights off and plug it in, see what it looks like. I'll find the battery, there it is. So here we go. Wait till it powers on. Oh, there's a bad connection there. And there we go. Oh, I really have to figure that out. I'll leave that on the table. It looks pretty cool. So, yeah, this is it. This is the. Um, on air sign that we've done out of the light, uh, the emergency exit light. So don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. If you do have any ideas or maybe I was doing something wrong with sticking the vinyl on, 
please comment below there is another video coming up very soon i'm working on the project actually right now and i'm going to start filming right after i turn this camera off so that's it see you next time my name is max bye